In addition to text, a lot of logos use graphics, be it abstract, emblem, mascot, pictorial, uh, you name it. So this video is going to show you how to work with some of the basic shapes of Illustrator to help you put together your own logos. So shapes is located right underneath the text tool and you'll see that little arrow that indicates that there's a hidden panel. So I'm going to click and hold over that and you'll see that we have rectangles, rounded rectangles, ellipse tools, polygon, and star and flare tools. So I'm just going to go through each one of these basic shapes with you. Rectangle. Uh, so you'll see that when you hit this, your cursor becomes a plus sign. So you can click and drag out the shape that you want right here. And you can see that it previews like how many inches wide uh, that the rectangle actually is. So I'm just going to do something kind of like this. And there we go. So what happens is Illustrator defaults to a rectangle with a black outline and no fill. And I can tell that because right here in the upper left hand corner, there is a white square with a red slash. And that means no, none, zippity doo -dah. So this area is the fill of the shape and this area is the outline of the shape. So if I wanna fill it in with a color, I can. So I can come in here and I can preview it. The key is to make sure that your shape is highlighted while you're doing this. Now maybe I like this blue but it's maybe I want something a little bit lighter. So down here in the tools palette you can see that there are two squares. So again fill and stroke. That's what they call outline in Illustrator is stroke. So if I double click on fill, you'll see it brings me to a color picker, which is the best thing ever. So I can choose maybe a lighter blue that I like. Notice also that there are a couple of formulas over here. So there's HSB, now you see RGB, so that's great for pixels, and then CMYK what you have right there. There's also a little Pantone color code. So if you know the Pantone color that you want to use, you can type in the code here. What's great about this option is that um, as interior designers, we work a lot with paint colors. So Sherwin-Williams actually has paint color formulas in RGB that if you find a paint color that you like on their website, look for their RGB formula, write down those three numbers, and you can input them right in here. It's pretty cool. All right, well, that's the blue I wanted, so I'm going to hit OK, and you'll see that it automatically changes it to blue. Now every rectangle that I draw afterwards is going to have that same color. So yes, you can change the outline. You can also change the stroke, um, like how many points wide that stroke is. So it always defaults to one point. So if I go 10 points, you can see how bold that outline gets. You can also choose what the outline is doing right over here where it says uniform. So this is the variable width profile. So if I choose, for instance, this one, you can see how it updates the look of my stroke or outline on the shape. And that's really fun. You can do a lot of cool things with this. The other option is you can change it from a basic, I'm going to put it back over here on uniform, a basic line to something different. So like here is a charcoal feather and you can see what that looks like. Maybe I'll uh, put the stroke up a little bit more so it's more obvious. Whoa, that's big. <laughs> we'll kind of calm her down a little bit there. Sheesh. All right, so you can kind of see that. Uh, there's lots of options. That one's kind of neat. It previews a few things for you. Ooh. But if you want to see more options than just what it previews, down here in the left hand corner is the library, the brush library. So there's all these different things that you can choose. Artistic, you can look at what a paintbrush would look like. So if we do that, that's great. Um, you can scroll down and see more come back here maybe I want more like a border look like geometric so what does that look like whoa 
Wow, there's a lot of different options that you can go through in libraries. So definitely, if you feel the need to check this out, pause the video and play with what you can come up with in terms of uh, what your stroke is doing and what libraries are available. So I'm just going to go ahead and click cancel. And I'm actually going to undo this so that I go back to a normal line. La, 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 la. There we go. So that's rectangle. Let's take a look at what rounded rectangle looks like. There we go. It's lovely. Now what I like about the rounded rectangle is that it allows you some degree of playing with exactly how rounded these edges are. So there's a little circle at the corners of the rectangle and if you click and drag it you can see how you can actually make the rectangle much more rounded than it was before. So there you go. Same things apply to the stroke or fill. Uh, you can change colors, you can change what it looks like. There's lots of things that you can play with. Coming back over here we have the ellipse tool. So as you're drawing it's going to create a, an ellipse. If you hold the shift while drawing it'll create a perfect circle. So be sure to hold shift while you're drawing. And then we have the polygon tool. Now the polygon tool is going to automatically default to I believe it's six sides, which is what you can see right there. If you want to add more sides or take away sides, just click on the screen and let go. It'll bring up this little window and you can tell it how many sides you want. So if you want to do a triangle, you do three and hit OK. So it's always going to do an isosceles triangle and maybe that's what you want, maybe it's not what you want. If you want to edit the triangle, click on it, use the white arrow, the white selection tool. Remember that the black tool will highlight and help move or select the object. The white arrow actually helps you change the object or edit the object. So you see these little grips in the corners. If you click once it only moves it, but if you click to activate the anchor, that's what they call those little grips. So you kind of have to like double click, but it's like click, click, just so that it knows that you want to work with that particular anchor. Then you can pick it up and drop it as you feel need to. So again, click to activate, click to drag it. And then you can create whatever kind of triangle that you're looking for. I could even take this point and move it downwards. Fancy, fancy, huh? So that's the polygon tool. It's pretty simple. Let's look at the star tool. Again, it's going to default to a basic five pointed star. If you want to create more points, simply click and let go and you'll again get this little box. If you want a 10 pointed star, let's see what that looks like. Whoa, starburst basically. So again, you can have fun with it. You can decide to click on these anchors and change them up a little bit if you wanted to. It kind of reminds me of the POW symbol in the old Batman TV series. POW! POW POW! All right. Wow, that's a lot of shapes. Okay, so how would I do this as a logo? Well, there's a lot of different things that you can do with shapes. So I'm going to... Um, well, let's do a rounded rectangle to start. So maybe it's just going to be a basic pictorial kind of thing. So I'm going to do I'll do this lime green. That's one of my favorites. And then I'm going to give this one a no outline or stroke. So remember, that's the white with the red slash. Now there are some other options that that has in here that you can do where you can actually tell it to be like a gradation, so like black and white. And then if you go to window and you find where it says gradient, this is where you can play with the gradient a little bit. So maybe I don't want black and white, maybe I want colors. So I'm going to double click right here where it's got the white and the black. Double click on that little dot and it'll give you a chance to kind of choose a new color. So let's do this pink. That's a very pretty pink. And let's see what other color I can do here. Uh, da -da -dee. 
I like the blue. I kind of want a more of a greenish color. The other options um, you can do, you can kind of pick different things here. Press escape to exit the color picker, it says. Whoa, I ended up getting two. So that happens when you click in between the two dots. You can actually add a dot and you could do three colors instead of just two. So you can have a lot of fun with this. You can also choose instead of it being kind of linear, you can do like a circle gradient or this other one, which is where you can kind of play with where the gradient's actually happening. So you can kind of make metals. This is a really great way to make metal. Although the thing with this one is you can't really, maybe you can. Yeah, you can't really pick the colors, like where things are going. Eh. I don't know, you gotta play with that one a little bit. This one's kind of new to me, so I haven't really had a chance to really do much to it. You can also tell it what angle you want this gradation to go. So if I do 60 degrees, you can see how it changes and kind of angles it a little bit. Opacity, how transparent do you want it to be? There are lots of fun things to do with gradients. I'm just going to go back here and I'm just going to pick um, for this shape to just be a solid color. There, we'll do red. So maybe I want another rounded rectangle. And this time it's blue. All right. Well, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing, hey, maybe I want that blue to go underneath the red. So the best place to do it, as demonstrated in the text video that came earlier, um, you go over to your layers panel and you'll see rectangle and rectangle blue and red. If you simply click on the blue rectangle and drag it underneath the red one, you'll see that it's an order of operations. So you can easily add things like this. Now some people want to do like an emblem logo. So I'm going to use the ellipse and I'm going to draw a circle. And let's say that maybe I want it to be white in the center. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to choose white before I start drawing, choose ellipse. Oh, it changed my, my regular circle, I forgot to unselect, so control Z to bring it back. Always click off if you don't want something to be selected anymore. Now I can choose the white color and I can choose ellipse, hold shift while drawing an ellipse and you can draw a white circle. I can place it and what's cool is that it finds the center of the other one and says center so I know that those two are perfectly aligned in the center. Maybe you don't want it aligned in the circle, maybe you want it to kind of be off a little bit to kind of give that really cool like orbital feeling, right? So that is what I would do if I were going to create an emblem logo or if I wanted, you know, like a circle, if I wanted some white on the side um, and you can see how that kind of hides that shape. I have a crescent moon look now, right? So then you can always come back in with text and you can create uh, something similar to this. I'm going to make this much larger. Maybe I'm going to change the color on this to be the same as what that is. Use the black to help you move the text. And there I've got a cool little logo that actually didn't take anything. It's two shapes and a text. Now you can get pretty fancy with these. So just know that uh, shapes can do a lot of different things. Use white to help hide parts of it or to create like negative space. Uh, you can use the layers to do an order of operations so that you can see it. I do want to show you lines. So of course we did show this a little bit in the text video, but a uh, line segment tool is basically you have to click and drag to draw a line. And it works much the same way. So right now, if you look, I have slashes in both areas. So if I were to select off of that, oh my gosh, the line's gone. 
but it's not really gone because it's still located in my layers. It's just hiding because there's no color associated to it. So if you do want color, make sure that you come and pick the stroke and then you can pick a color. You can also still tell it, you know, that you want it to be uh, thicker and maybe you want it to be more of a paint look to it. So the line tool can still be affected by all the libraries that this little brush definition area has. So you can still play with this and come up with some really great things. So there's also the arc tool and the spiral tool. The spiral tool is kind of cool. So if you click and drag, it can create like a little snail shell look to it. Um, if you click once with the spiral, you can ask it, um, you know, do you want it to decay anymore? So 60% I'll put, and then I'll also, well, let's just see what 60% looks like. So you can see it kind of flattens out the snail shell. If I click again, it says 10 segments. Well, what does it look like when there's five? Let's click OK. So the segments is these little grips right here. So you can see that it's not nearly as tight in the center but it still is decaying about the same percentage there. So you can have a lot of fun with spirals in your logos as well. Let's see what else did this have? I haven't really ever used those other two, so I don't really do much for there, but the brush is a fun tool to use, the paintbrush tool located right underneath it. Uh, so this is where basically you freehand your drawing. And again, you can still use libraries. So let's go to decorative scatter. This one's always kind of fun and interesting. Uh, let's see, let's use something kind of cool. Oh, here's a snowflake. So if you click and drag with that, you can see how you can create little things. So I'm gonna do something like this. If I make my stroke bigger, I do believe it makes the scatter pictures larger. Wow, there it is. Woo! So you can have a lot of fun with this stuff. You can get really crazy with it. But that's the beauty of Illustrator is that you can do a lot of different types of things. So the brush tool is there. I don't think I've ever really used the blob, blob brush tool. I don't even know what that does, but okay. The other tool that you can use is um, the pencil tool. Very similar in nature to the brush, except that um, it's definitely much more free-handed. And the shapes always kind of come out a little wavy and weird, but it smooths out once you draw it. So you can create lines or shapes, and it'll know how to kind of close it. Actually, if you kind of watch my cursor as I get closer to it, see how that little circle pops up? That indicates it's going to automatically close that shape for me so that you can do that. Now, something that I had just spotted before I started this video was this shaper tool, which is kind of interesting. It acts a lot like the pencil tool, but it also reads what kind of shape that you're trying to draw. So it'll actually automatically make a perfect circle for you. Or if you want a triangle, let's see if it does that. Oh, it does. Does it do like an isosceles triangle? Let's see. Mm, not really. No, nope. it's gonna keep it um, very isosceles actually. So uh, that's not gonna work so great, but um, it, it, it just takes your basic drawings and it makes them a perfect shape. So that's kind of an interesting tool. Smooth tool, I think it's just if you want, if you have like wavy pencil lines, it'll help you smooth out the path of your pencil. So there's a lot of tools here for you to play with. And I'm actually going to delete all of this because this is a hot mess on my screen. So I'm going to go with the black arrow on the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to create a selection box and hit delete on my keyboard. That's the easiest way to clear your artboard. Now there is one more tool that uh, we'll go in in the next video and that's your pen tool. So if the shapes and brushes and all of that kind of stuff mm, doesn't quite give you the shape that you're looking for, the pen tool is going to be your next option. It 
it definitely is an art and a science to using the pen tool so we'll just do it in a separate video but for now this is how you can create some basic shapes and then you can start formatting some of your logos.